She's a carpenter. She's a carpenter. Hey, hey, y'all, welcome back to the studio. I'm Aramis Hamer, a large-scale acrylic artist who is inspired by black girl magic, hip-hop, and all things astrology. Two team, where did we leave off last time? I think I was out in the streets because y'all know I say out in the street. So we're back in the studio. The last time you all saw me, I was out in Beacon Hill painting a mural for my friend Tarek, uh, who was one of the organizers of Feed the People. So there's a beautiful Feed the People mural that's out here in Beacon Hill in the Seattle area. So if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out. So now I'm back in the studio. I know it might look a little different. Your girl been been doing a little, not spring cleaning. What is it? Look, fall cleaning, if that's a thing. I have quite a bit coming up. I'm gonna do a whole new video about uh, the changes that's coming to my online store and my website. So actually maybe that can help some artists out there who are trying to start a website or sell some of your prints online. If you all are new here, then I'll let you know that I'm working on a Zodiac series where I'm painting all 12 of the astrological signs. That has been way on the back burner with everything going on. I have some other paintings that are like a lot more time sensitive. If you all are in Seattle, then you are invited to the Bellevue Art Museum opening. That's gonna be taking place in November. Yellow number five is the name of the exhibition Exhibition is curated by my dear friend and super, super dope artist, Tarika Waters. I'ma drop all that information below. I feel like that was a long enough intro, so grab you a cup of tea and let's get into the studio vlog. Testing this layout. I'm really debating if I'm gonna keep this island. Mm, decisions, decisions. Since I'm revamping the whole place, this was a piece of like storage furniture or whatever that came, that was in the studio before I actually moved in. So the artists left it here because they built it inside of the space. So it literally won't fit through the door to get out. So if I don't keep it, we're gonna have to completely demolish it, which is like sad. It's just so big and so bulky, but actually now that I got it cleared out, it could serve as a perfect worktop. I barely ever use a worktop as I use the worktop right now, but I have to get these paintings shipped. Y'all, you ever feel just like behind at life? Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Uh, these are two paintings that were sold during the art auction and I'm super grateful for my new collectors, but I have definitely been slow getting this stuff shipped out to everyone, so. Now I'm just putting some hanging hardware on the back so that these can be off to their new homes. day known to mankind. This is, y'all, I'm not a fan of making custom boxes, but that's what I gotta do. I think there are some pre-made boxes online. Back in the day, I, I might've used like one or two of them. The thing is like the size is never right. And I don't like the painting sliding around in the box because then it's, it's at risk for damage. So when I make a custom box, it can be nice and tight against the painting. We got it bubble wrapped. I'm also gonna fill it with some packing papers. That's how I like to package my originals. But this is why it can be a delay for me getting them out because it's just like a process to make to make the box. We got a lot done in the studio today. Andy's gonna be here in the studio helping me out tomorrow. So I will pick up with you all then. It 
is the next day. Even though I'm in the same clothes, we're not gonna talk about that. We're just gonna move on. It's been one of those kind of days. Andy is here, he is helping me out. We are putting in work today. So that island, as you can see, has been completely dismantled. We are saving quite a few bits, but mostly Andy is completely rebuilding it where um, the entire bottom part is gonna be nice and open and airy so we can have some, some light flowing through. Um, and it'll be significantly lighter because it was just so big and bulky and kind of hard for me to push around. And it's gonna have a hinge on it, so it's gonna be half the size, and it's gonna be able to pop right back up if I need more space, and then fold back down when I don't need the space anymore. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I see that I'm going in now to focus. I told y'all, <laughs> it was one of them kind of days. So stay tuned as the island comes together. Carpenter. Act like I'm doing something. Let me get footage of me doing something. What'd you say? I meant to say we should put some glue in there. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna. Good. Let, let's go ahead and put some glue. Let's go. Let's put Take them out and put glue in? Well, it's not like you have to redrill holes. Like, you can use the same exact holes. Babe, it's sealed. Okay. What are you talking Okay, put, put glue on that one before you drill that. Okay. Don't finish that one off. I'll come behind you. You are something else. You know that? Oh, there's a knife. Can you give me some pressure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good morning, hello, how are you? It was an extremely long day last night. Actually, this morning, we have been in the, we were in the studio last night till about three in the morning, and if you know anything, anything about your girl, you know she get a little sleepy at around 10.30. So for 3 a.m. it was like, ugh. I turn into a grouch when I'm tired. So we had to, we had to put a button on it. 
we had to button it up real nice and tight. I'm back in the studio this morning. Andy is still sleeping in. He's getting some rest. The studio is a complete disaster. We left it exactly how it was last night. That's how tired we was. So I went and rented a um, commercial vacuum cleaner from Home Depot. So like, I always forget about the tool rentals at Home Depot. It's pretty cheap too. It's around 25 bucks. So $25 for 24 hours. So you can rent that for today, get your spot all clean. So I'm about to vacuum up all this dust and dirt that is on the floor. We still got a little bit more to do, but it's not going to be as much. And we have the, we have the vacuum for the entire day. So we're good. I'm about to start getting it cleaned up. So when Andy wakes up, we can get into part two. The tabletop is looking so good. I'm beyond excited. And of course, your plant mom over here. Okay, I'm already thinking about like putting plants at the bottom. I feel like it'd be perfect for the aesthetic, you know, perfectly Instagrammable. So super excited, but let me first get this floor clean. back andy is here the man who's out here building me a workbench shout out to him we just finished up a little lunch we got us some evergreen because this right here this here this is because she's been eating fried food that's 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 what's really been going on but we are making so much progress on the bench we're almost done babe you think we'll be done today yeah we'll be done today all right y'all stay tuned Raise that side a quarter inch. You got a pencil hand? Um, hold, hold it. Mm, it's probably over here. Like, why do we lose every tool? Okay, maybe not. Do you mind if it's a pen? Okay. See, you smart. Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are. Whatever time of day it is where you are. I'm back in the studio, y'all, and we are all done with the workbench. Let's go check it out. So we decided to keep it. <laughs> it's so funny thinking back, like I actually wasn't gonna keep it. And now that it's done, I'm so happy that I did. <sighs> Y'all, we, we put in some hard work. We put in some hard work in on this piece. And I'm happy that we was able to save a little bit. This is the original top that was already a part of this island. And this was the bottom, the casters. Really the only thing is, the only thing that's new is the center part with the two by fours and the hinges and all of that. And so we did get rid of the cabinets and those bits were just so old and they really didn't serve me what I needed to do. But let me show y'all my favorite part. So it's nice and small, it's light, your girl can still work. It has some locks on this side so I can lock it off so it's not sliding over as much. And then when I wanna pop it all the way out, we just take this two by four and bring it on up. Boom. Slide it on in. And then it's in there. And now we have a full tabletop. I love it. So I got some paint here with me. I'm gonna be painting it solid white so it can be nice and cool and smooth and clean. So I'm just gonna be using the bare. Oh, is this not the bare marquee? This is a Bear Premium Plus, that's cool, that's cool. So I'm gonna be using this Bear Paint in One Primer, so I'm gonna just do one cone on that. I got one of these little touch-up kits. These come in handy, they are the super plug when you just wanna do a simple project, has a small roller on it, you can even use this dish and pour it in there. So, and this is like $2.60. So actually, shout out to my patrons who are in the $2 tier. Y'all, when I say every little bit counts, 
it does and it helps and it helps support what I do so shout out to the patreon tribe thank you all so much and of course if you would like to support me on patreon which you the real MVP <laughs> thank you so much uh, you all can learn more about my patreon down at the link in my bio uh, let's head on to the tabletop Okay, so you know your girl is running her online store. If you didn't know, y'all should check it out on my website. That's gonna be in the link below. I actually just recently posted on my Instagram that I'm not gonna be restocking the crystal blocks that I have on there. Let's talk about it. Y'all know I love to share tips and tools. That's part of the reason that I'm here is to share some information with y'all. So if there's other artists out there trying to start their online business and worried about, you know, manufacturers, third party manufacturers, drop shipping, prints, acrylic blocks, clutches, merch, pillows, all the different things. I've tried just about every company, okay? And I had feedback on them all. So actually, I think at some point, I'm gonna do like a whole video dedicated to, it's it's actually called print on demand sites. So POD sites, um, where you can actually upload your images and then print things out from there. The issue that I have with some of them is the quality control. Like the quality is not there and that's why I haven't done drop shipping with them because every time I get something from this particular company, and I'm gonna put them out there, like actually the box Boxes right here is red bubble so red bubble is where I would get my um, my acrylic blocks call them crystal blocks because they they look like they so beautiful like they're crystal clear cut diamond smooth even finishes but the thing is every time they come to me it always has like something since they are so crisp and because they are so uh, geometric and has smooth lines if there's just a bump it just throws off the whole aesthetic for me. And I know a lot of my customers and supporters and people who buy my art probably won't even notice, but for me, I notice. And I know that I don't feel comfortable doing drop shipping, especially with, rub with Redbubble, because when I order them, I just ordered five of these. When I order them, they, they come looking all weird. So I either keep them where they're like on display here in my studio, or I give them to family or friends, or I'll just have them available at a discounted price. So this was my last last restock for these so these are the unicorn acrylic blocks that have been on my store for like years and I'm done with them like I love them this is their six by six size if anybody's looking the thing is they don't have any hanging hardware on the back so it's strictly a tabletop piece that you can put on your desk which I think is really cool I actually have quite a few pieces that I just display here on my desk but so I don't know if you can see yes yes you can see it can you see those lines being a creep. Those are print lines. So the black isn't black. You can see the lines from the printer. And the, now the other one, I actually have one that's up here on my desk. Grab this. So this is how it came to me. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think, I don't think you can see that. Okay. So first of all, it came to me where the face of it was scuffed. And the other thing, since it is a back mounted photo print, um, so it's a solid piece of acrylic, and then on the back, the image is adhered this way. So what'll happen, some of, I'll get them, it'll lift, it'll be lifting. You can't see, oh yeah, yeah, you can. Maybe a little, <laughs> maybe. Even on the edges, you see that? You, you see that? <laughs> Like y'all gonna reply. <laughs> reply in the comments though, let me let me know. So this is one, I was like, you know what, whatever. <sighs> Forget it, I'll just keep it. So, this is the last batch. Let me say this, cause I don't wanna be out here shaming no companies, okay? They do have good customer service. Whenever I reach out to them and, to, and let them know that I'm having issues, they reprint them, they don't even want me to send it back. I mean, there's not really anything that they're able to do with it, you know? So they're like, keep it, we're just gonna send you some more. The thing is, if I have orders backed up or if, I'm tr if I have a show coming up, so I've already waited two weeks for it to come and now I get it and it's damaged and now I have to wait another two weeks to get some more and I'm like, you know what? It's it's not, it's not even worth it having these in my online store. Uh, the prints are more popular anyway, so the prints are there. I absolutely love them, but it's definitely a risk whenever you're using the print-on-demand companies, especially for drop shipping. So I've been doing tons of research because I've been really trying to figure out a way where I can hold less inventory on hand and do a lot less shipping. Y'all seen in the past studio vlogs, your girl be having a full printout. Of course, I have my shipping label printer here, which is phenomenal. Of course, 
super grateful for people who support my art. I love getting the orders. It's absolutely phenomenal. The thing is, I just find myself shipping orders, managing customer emails, to going to the post office. I find myself doing a lot more of that than the actual painting and the creation, which is what I really love to do and that's my passion. So I did find a company who does incredible drop shipping. They they're able to customize it. They put thank you cards in there. They're beautiful. So I ordered hella, I just ordered hella from their website to check them out. I ordered multiple different things, multiple different sizes. So a batch of orders did come. I just wanna reserve my feedback until I get everything. And then I feel like I can give you all some, some clear feedback on that. So stay tuned. I just can't, I just, if it ain't one thing, it's another. It really, all five of these. All five of them. <sighs> Can we talk about how big, how big this plant is getting? Oh my God, it's insane. With all that sawdust when we were cutting and everything with the table, I have to give this baby a wipe down. So that is what we's about to do. I'm just using a little water just to wipe these babies down. Man, the studio is really coming together. This has just helped me so much to, to get my mind right and to get organized. Finally feel like I can get started on some other paintings and get a flow going with my studio. So you all probably saw from the last vlogs how I was just trying to get our apartment together because we had just moved into a new apartment. So now we're semi-settled. You know, if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll see that my kale is growing, my mustard greens are going. Look, I don't know what's going on with the lettuce. I think, <laughs> I think I planted it too late in the season. So the lettuce isn't thriving too well, but y'all know I love my plants. So we gotta, we gotta take care of all the plants. Andy and I was just watching this documentary the other day called Extinction of the Facts with our uh, one of our favorite narrators, David Attenborough. I'm just so happy that they finally putting the facts out there about what's really going on when it comes down to climate change, when it comes down to pollution, like when it comes down to the actual extinction of so many animals and insects and even plants throughout our world. I'm the person like once I watch something, it, it can't be undone. Like once I have the information, it's a done deal for me. Actually, I think, yeah, yeah. After I had watched the documentary, What the Health, that's actually when I stopped eating um, meat and dairy. So that was about three years ago. I think that came out in 20, 2017. Um, I had already hadn't eaten red meat for quite some time. It's probably been years, probably since back in Chicago maybe. I don't know, it don't really even matter, but what I'm saying is like, you know, they say knowledge is power, but knowledge isn't isn't power until you actually act on it, until you actually make it powerful, until you actually do something with it and implement it, you know? So I'm just, I'm just about to make a lot of changes, y'all. Like with everything going on in the world, it can definitely feel hopeless. You can definitely feel powerless in the, in the midst of everything. But at the same time, there's still so much that we do have control over. And I'm just trying to take care of the things that I have control over. I mean, it's already madness going on out there and the one thing that I have control over is my sanity, my peace of mind, how long I stay on these platforms, how much information I consume from the news, and just doing just doing my part in this world to bring some love and some light. That is the definite goal when it comes down to sharing more of my art, sharing more content on YouTube. Your girl is about to get super organized and strategic. I feel like there's just this stereotype with artists where, you know, we're lazy, we're unprofessional, we don't reply to emails, like, and don't get me wrong, I've been there artist <laughs> I'm still that artist okay I'm trying I'm working on becoming a better me one day at a time I'm working on becoming a better me what I'm just working on is really trying to create a whole a whole new narrative around or what an artist can be like an artist can be organized an artist can be professional they can be strategic you know I actually saw this post from one of my friends um, <laughs> Shout out to Y King Gary. He's always doing phenomenal things in the community. Like that's truly somebody who puts in real work out here in these streets. So like when it comes down to like the system, the man, whoever, whoever you want to call it, whatever you want the name to be, like he's like the if I find it, maybe I'll put the screenshot up somewhere. But it was along the lines of we aren't being outsmarted. We're being out organized. 
Like these systems, they're so strategic, they're so organized, they have such this tactical advantage. Of course, it's been formatted that way, it was created that way. So it's like now that we're aware of these systems, now that we're aware of what's going on in our world, how do we vote with our actions? How do we vote with our dollars? How do we vote with our clicks? Like, shout out to y'all for clicking to this video. I'm just trying to be who I want to be. You know, not what somebody says I have to be, not what type of art somebody thinks that I have to create. And even when it comes down to how I'm supposed to feel, I feel like the media is feeding all this, feeding us all this content around fear and hopelessness and hate. It's like, honey, when I call my friends and when I talk to them, it's all love and light. When I call my mom, it's all love and light. So I'm just cultivating those relationships, making sure I'm checking in on the family, make sure I'm checking in on the friends. So I encourage you to do the same. It can definitely feel hopeless out here. It can feel like we all going to hell in a handbasket, but look, not about to be out here with the spirit of fear now, honey. <laughs> but with a power, love, and a sound mind. <laughs> I'm all juiced up. I talked to my mom earlier. Whenever I talk to my mom, she always just give me so, so much encouragement, you know? <laughs> you be thinking she's just like spewing stuff off, off her head, but half the time it's scripture, okay? <laughs> she's she sharing the words, she's sharing the scriptures. <laughs> love that woman, love that woman. So moral of this video, check in on your family, y'all. Check in on your friends. Um, dust your plants. <laughs> Stay hydrated, okay? <laughs> These are the things that we need to do. See the little no no? Look at the little no no. Look at the little no no. We made so much progress in the studio, y'all. I absolutely love the fall and it's been so great like seeing the leaves change and then seeing the weather get a little cooler. Um, but I'm super excited because this coming up week in Seattle, it is all sunshine. And we are gonna need that because we're gonna be starting the Black Lives Matter mural that's in Capitol Hill. Today is Monday. We're gonna start painting on Wednesday and no, I'm, I'm saying it. Nope, I'm, I'm about to hold myself accountable. I'm saying it right here on the tube team, okay? This video will be out by Wednesday so you all can have this information, okay? <laughs> of course, I've already shared this information with the Patreon tribe. It's already live up on my Instagram. So those are two places where y'all can definitely make sure that y'all get that information before YouTube because as y'all know, it, it takes a minute. It takes a good minute to edit these videos. So we got the Black Lives Matter mural coming up and I'm gonna be making sure that I put the finishing touches on these pieces for the Bellevue Art Museum. That opening is gonna be November 6th. If you in C-Town, I would love to see you there. And of course, if you aren't in Seattle, if you're in Fury or Renton or Kent, Albert, wherever, if you are in the Washington area, come through y'all, come through to Bellevue Art Museum. We are gonna have some ways to, to exhibit the show digitally, just with COVID, there's, we aren't sure of how the whole, nobody knows. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta laugh to keep from crying. It's okay, we don't have the answers, okay? But there will definitely be a way for you all to be to experience it digitally if you are here in Seattle. So that is about it for the information that I wanted to share with you all. Thank you so much. Y'all, first of all, if you're still here, you use the GOAT. Use the GOAT, use the greatest of all time. But I just wanna say that I'm super, 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 duper grateful for y'all. Um, I was just looking at a past Instagram story and like I did um, a recording of when like I hit 100 subscribers, <laughs> which is awesome. Like I'm just super grateful for everybody and to see now that I'm like, I'm over 600. And I know these numbers might sound, seem small to like big, you know, big YouTubers, whatever. But like for me, y'all, like I'm just, I'm super, Super, super grateful and of course just like everybody else we all start from zero so to even already have over 600 is really exciting so if you are not subscribed yet make sure you click that subscribe button so that we can be at 60,000 <laughs> at some point but thank you all so much and remember if you liked it like it and I'll see you all next time <laughs>